Hello, this is Taylor Ray of the 1P versus 2P podcast, plausibly live talking about video game news, reviews, history, music, and culture. With me, as always, is my brother and co-host, Ryan Ray, from a very long hiatus. Yes, Taylor, it's been such a long time. What, what exactly happened to us? Well, we had a lot of life events going on. I've moved across the country. I'm out here in Seattle now. Ryan had a baby, but now we're back to video games, right? We're back to escapism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, going back into the virtual world to escape from our real world. Yeah, exactly. So we thought we would record this episode for some very, very timely news. But before we get into the hype surrounding Red Dead Redemption 2, if you're listening to this podcast episode, it's already been released. We just wanted to give you uh, a few updates about the, the future of this show we plan on still doing our Game of the Year coverage towards the end of this year. Uh, but beyond that, we're sort of transitioning away and doing more of the blogging, doing more video streams, doing more video features, and doing less and less of the podcasting like you've noticed uh, this year. I think the last episode that we put out there was from March of this year, right? Yeah. And that was just a music episode. We're, we're back. We're pivoting to video, which is so in right now. Uh, yeah, I feel like we've teased this before in past episodes, but you know what? In all honesty, podcasting is tough. It's time-consuming. It's something that Ryan and I, we we love talking about video games, but the, the time and effort that it takes to make this podcast sound good and <laughs> sound like we know what we're talking about uh, is is a lot of work. So I think, uh, I think there's a lot of value in doing some of the other stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's get on to this uh, major, major video game news and massive release in Red Dead Redemption 2, okay? So this game being released as of Friday, October 26th, uh, has gotten a lot of hype, and some of it because of negative coverage recently in the press. Ryan, talk to that a little bit. So yeah, this all started with an article in New York Magazine about the making of Red Dead Redemption 2. You've seen these kinds of articles before. Typically, they're pretty softball interviews, previews of the game. And uh, in this New York Magazine article... Studio Rockstar Studio head Dan Hauser was quoted as saying that him and his team worked 100 hour weeks to get the game out the door. And of course, that's caused quite a controversy and a discourse on Twitter. And uh, so the following Monday, Hauser said in an emailed statement to Kotaku, who was reporting on, on this, that he was only referring to the writing team's contributions and only for a period of about three weeks. And then uh, afterwards, Rockstar made a very un-Rockstar-like move. They lifted their social media policies, allowing employees to share their thoughts uh, on their own experiences with uh, the very notorious game development practice of crunch, which is when basically uh, a bunch of the teams that work in game development work on a game typically in a very short amount of time, put in a lot of hours, a lot of overtime, and a lot of people describe it as a death march. You don't get to see your family. You spend uh, dinner working through the game, potentially sleeping in your office overnight to get a game released in time for the release date. And then afterwards, uh, Jason Schreier over at Kotaku did a longer form piece, uh, which you should absolutely read, called Inside Rockstar Games Culture of Crunch, uh, where he actually got to get several accounts from Rockstar employees course on anonymous accounts uh, to protect their job security and uh, he did get some uh, quotes from rockstar studio heads namely jennifer colby who was serving more or less as the game's project manager and some really really uh, let's say telling stuff about how rockstar exactly works yeah and the important thing to note here is that Video game crunch happens across the industry, and that's not to defend it at all. The practice, I think, is, you know, very exploitative of its workers. It's really a shame. Um, you know, myself, I, I work in audiovisual and, and, and IT departments, and I see the way developers are asked to stay uh, overtime hours, which they are getting compensated for, right, time and a half. But a lot of the times, like in this, uh, in this rock star situation, you have salaried employees who are full time, but are expected, you know, sort of through a, a toxic culture of staying late all, on nights and weekends. So maybe not necessarily one 100 hour work weeks, like Dan Hauser said, but 
you're talking still about, let's say, six or seven days out of the week, you're putting in 10 to 14 hour days. That still adds up. That adds up a lot of time away from your family. A lot of burnout happens in this industry. And we're seeing a lot more accounts of this because I think a lot more developers are becoming fed up with this practice. And there's been discussions about unionizing and that sort of thing. And Jason Schreier has really brought a great light onto this onto this issue. And we'll post that story that Ryan mentioned uh, in the show notes. I highly recommend you check it out. Very eye opening. Well, and Rockstar themselves even have a you know a very bad history with this kind of stuff it happened on grand theft auto 4 grand theft auto 5 max Payne 3 famously uh you know so that game was uh brought on from another team and then rockstar kind of finished the development of that game uh that game has been described the development of that as like a death march uh people were not happy working on that game rockstar also uh took over for la noir uh that famously also was not a good development cycle it's it's interesting a lot of a lot of games that are it's this typically happens with open world world games uh because there's a lot of detail in these games uh you see this a lot with the assassin's creed games uh, multiple teams across multiple different studios within ubisoft uh lots and lots of crunch happening to get these games out the door often kind of buggy lots and lots of detail sometimes these games are regularly pretty highly reviewed Uncharted 4, also famously, uh, the developer in that game, pretty open, Naughty Dog was pretty open about how crunch really was uh, factored into, uh, that game's development. And what's, what's kind of, uh, gamers kind of have to really struggle with is that often crunch produces these really beautiful, well detailed games. I mean, Christ in Red Dead Redemption Two, they've modeled the horse testicles. Like <laughs> yeah. that's a level. That's that's a level of detail that's usually not reserved for most video games. And to get to to that level of detail, you know, it, it's an open question about whether or not it's really worth it to make these developers' lives hell in in order to make these games quality wise slightly better right now uh we're recording this the day before red dead redemption 2 comes out some reviews have already come out uh it's reviewing pretty well uh i'm looking forward to the game myself i really enjoyed the original red dead redemption but i have a little bit of pause playing this game knowing what kind of went into it the blood sweat and tears and thinking about how i can really uh change this practice in the industry while still supporting developers and still honestly wanting to play a game that I've been really interested in playing. Yeah, I think to say that this game has been getting some good reviews is an understatement on Metacritic right now. It's sitting, the Xbox One version is sitting at a 98 and the PS4 at a 97, you know, one of the highest rated games of all time. So looking at, at it from that perspective of wanting to support a game, it's okay to have mixed emotions about this, right? You don't want to support companies that, you know, force crunch, that have these these horrible cultures. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you want to participate. You want to be involved in the conversations about, you know, what's popular, these blockbuster games. Um, I think we're seeing now more developers and publishers... Actually, I hope that this is the case. I don't know how much this is happening now, but I think a lot of them are being more open to the idea of making necessary delays, right? Um, as opposed to forcing this crunch by setting deadlines and, and setting extremely high expectations. As I read through Jason Schreier's piece on Kotaku, I think one of the quotes that really stood out to me from this anonymous source said that the temperament has always been, it should be a privilege to serve in this organization. He's talking about Rockstar. And if you don't agree with that, there's a long line of people waiting to take your place. And that sort of fear of losing your job, not being credited on working on a major game like this, for example, there have been reports about that as well. If you don't stick it out through the release date, you'll be completely left out of the credits, for example, is, I think, really, really a huge shame. Um, and I really am supporting super creative people who work on these games who really deserve better working conditions than this. Right. And then in the aftermath, it seems like it's a completely the executives at Rockstar. They just really care about, uh, oh, I can't speak for them, but seemingly, you know, it's this kind of attitude. Rockstar in their games and also in, you know, previous interviews has had kind of this really like F you attitude. You know, it's, uh, that's why the games are so like satirical and are willing to, 
lambast anybody and everybody. Uh, but there was this quote after this uh, long Kotaku piece came out in a uh, interview with uh, a British GQ magazine, Dan Hauser talked a little bit about more about the uh, Red Dead Redemption 2's development. And I just want to read you this quote because it really is pretty telling. He says, quote, Sam and I talk about this a lot, and it's that games are still magical. It's like they're made by elves. You turn on the screen and it's just this world that exists on TV. I think you gain something by not knowing how they're made. As much as we might lose something in terms of people's respect for what we do, their enjoyment of what we do is enhanced, which is probably more important, which is just like... Dude, you know all this negative coverage has come and happened, and to go and give a quote like that is completely tone deaf. It's completely making your employees invisible. It's totally invalidating all the really hard effort they've put into making this probably very excellent game. It's just like, why? That's so unnecessary. It, it would be so much... I would rather accept a Red Dead Redemption 2 that came out maybe two or three years later because they, the developers worked in conditions that were actually like human uh you know <laughs> I, the average american worker should be working 40 hours a week you know that's a nine to five eight hours and you get weekends you get to see your family you get to have a life you shouldn't have to put up with you know 60 hour work weeks 100 hour work weeks 80 hour work weeks stuff that where you know you feel pressured not necessarily by company policy but because everybody else is around you is doing it to and like you know only the people who get promotions are the people who you know really stick it in and work hard at the job like come on man that's that's just really untenable and it's just going to lead to a lot of like burnout that's why so many developers burn out of this industry and imagine the like amount of like cool games that we missed out on because we just like treated the people making them like trash it's so unfathomable to me that like uh, another person could do that to somebody else just for the sake of like the cowboy video game that's really cool. Like, come on. Exactly. We don't make video games, but we really appreciate this art form. You know, we're it's such a huge hobby for both of us. I don't want to see much like in the same way that you hear about like terrible conditions and social outcry when it comes to you know movie making, for example. It's okay to have mixed emotions about this. That being said, I think both of us are going to be playing Red Dead Redemption 2 by the end of this year. But keeping these conversations alive, I think, is uh, super important. Maybe we can affect change uh, for the folks who are making these games that we really, really love. Don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, man. I, this this industry needs to be remade if this is how this works. Uh, especially because, uh, you know, these issues have been always been present, but now finally they're coming to light. People are starting to talk about them. And I think that's really, really a positive thing. Uh, what's not positive is that it keeps happening. Yeah, it just really sucks. All right, moving away from the Red Dead Redemption 2 topic, let's catch up on games that we've been playing for the past several months because it's quite a big list. And we're also pretty excited about some games to play before our Game of the Year deliberations at the end of this year. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll go ahead and start us off. So I've been playing The Messenger, which is a game that's being put out and published by Devolver Digital. This game kind of starts off as a NES uh, Ninja Gaiden style game, an adventure game where you play as a ninja with a sword. You kind of, the neat mechanic that they tie in there is when you slash a sword you kind of get a double jump in the air uh, so if you slash anything uh you can you can jump and there's like castlevania style ladders lanterns that uh they play around with this mechanic a little bit and then there's a twist halfway through the game and i'm comfortable kind of talking uh, about the twist because they've shown it in the game trailers halfway through the game you think you're done and then it turns into a metroidvania in which you backtrack and then what also happens is it goes from 8-bit graphics to the 16-bit era and it looks like a super a really good super nintendo or sega genesis game uh what i what i do want to say about this game is that i i really liked the first part and then when it kind of became about backtracking i kind of fell off of it a little bit i think there's some really really smart writing and dialogue in this game uh, i think it's definitely worth checking out i'm playing the pc version but yeah it's the perfect game it, for the switch it's uh, it's available on that platform too and i think it's worth checking out some of the boss battles are really cool i think the action is really uh, fast-paced and great but uh you know it, probably about a 15 hour experience and by about hour eight i've kind of petered off of it a little bit i think it's i think it's worth checking out but maybe on a sale well something that we've played together a lot lately has been destiny 2 because of the new forsaken expansion which i think 
is excellent. Uh, I really love the new Gambit mode, which is sort of like it's they call it PVEVP. So you're fighting both waves of hordes of enemies, but you can also fight crucible style, right? It's it's you're still you can still kill the enemy team in certain ways. It's very very interesting mechanics. A great addition to that game. And on top of that, the new story missions with Forsaken, the way they've reworked uh, the guns in that game, I think have been really great quality of life improvements. Um, right now, there's a sort of Halloween style ho uh, holiday event, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. I, I think the the Forsaken is is continues to be really really fun. Um, I'm excited to see what they do next with it. Yeah, they've added a really lot of uh, end game content to this game, and it, this is easily the best Destiny has been probably since uh, the Taken King expansion and the original Destiny. Uh, I would still say, th however, though, if you're not up for a grind, there are still some very grindy elements, uh, particularly uh, around infusing guns to make the guns slightly better uh, with infusion, and some of the materials don't drop as often as they should. But uh, beyond that, I, I think it is a really enjoyable time. Uh, because Bungie were the developers of Halo, the gun the gunplay is still really good, and it's, it's just really a good, fun loot shooter. And this is easily the best Destiny 2 has ever been. And we have not tried the new raid yet, but we're seeing some pretty good reviews for that uh, as well. So that's a, also a huge change for those people willing to put in the time to complete those. Speaking of reviews, I we won't talk about it much, but I just put up a review of uh, Marvel's Spider-Man, which is out on PS4, made by Insomniac Games. Really, really good Spider-Man game, probably the best Spider-Man game ever uh, since Spider-Man 2. Uh, that was based on the movie originally. Really fun take on New York and the superhero genre. Has uh, Arkham-style combat. Story is really well-paced. Really humanizes a lot of uh, you know Peter Parker, Mary Jane, Aunt May, a lot of the uh, Spider-Man verse characters that you've known and loved and uh I, I really enjoyed it quite a bit i think it's definitely worth your time and a, kind of a shorter open world experience easy uh 100 platinum trophy to get on on ps4 now so check out ryan's review that'll be in the show notes as well for more on that i've only played about the first hour of spider-man but i love how it opens up for me the fighting mechanics are a little bit repetitive it is batman arkham style you're chaining combos and dodging, you know, using proper timing. I think it's it, it's interesting in a way because as Spider-Man, you really feel as agile as he should be. Whereas I don't think that that was the case. It was a simple brawler in in past Spider-Man games. Um, the swinging and parkouring across the city is really fun. I see a lot of folks saying that they they don't want to fast travel because it's just so fun to get from point A to point B in the city and encountering a lot of the side content. It seems like a really, really fleshed out story too. So uh, I'm excited to check that out before the end of the year. Uh, same thing for me, just because of you know the process of moving across the country, I have still trying to catch up on video games in general. God of War is also on my backlog. Um, for me on PS4, I've played through the first hour. Really love what I've tried so far, though, Ryan. Though you've beaten it, right? I have. It's a really excellent re envisioning of the God of War series. You know, before God of War was kind of a uh, very brutal adventure style uh, game with puzzle elements and that were sometimes a little bit frustrating. It felt a little bit like uh, Teenager made the uh, first series of God of War games because it was all about like you know the ways you'd brutally kill your enemies, and there was like that sex mini game that was present in every God of War game. And now this is kind of a more uh, they moved away from like the Greek pantheon of uh, gods that you were killing, and now they've moved on to the Norse gods. Uh, Kratos has a son in this game. Uh, it doesn't feel like an escort mission. It's it's really really very well done. Uh, some really, uh, good, you know, for Kratos, who is this, like, kind of known for being this, like, very angry video game character, it really toned it down and did kind of a good job. He's still pretty angry and, and, and pissed off, but, uh, like, they did, they did a really good job in, like, tempering that a little bit with his, like, experience and age. And, uh, the powers are really great, really great upgrade tree, uh, really great open world that's very easy to backtrack. They do a good job with, like, the checklist in that game of the things that you really want to, uh, seek out. Yeah, man, uh, God of War is suited to be one of the, uh, it's gonna be on my top ten list for sure. Yeah, can't wait to catch up on that between God of War and Spider-Man. Got a lot to catch up on, but... Yeah, I have actually completed some games. Mario Tennis Aces with its new single-player adventure mode. It was fun to play through that. I like some of the mechanics that they've 
added to the series, including you know power shots and defending with time with proper timing against you know smash attacks. Uh, there's some there's some great great additions to Mario Tennis, and I think it's one of those games that even if you don't want to play competitively online, it still holds up on Switch as one of those casual local couch competitive games uh it's really fun well it's pretty much gonna have to be a local co-op game because they've put the uh, online mode behind nintendo's switch's new uh online paywall that's right yeah that's happened recently too same thing with splatoon 2 and other online games which is kind of a bummer for me because i did like playing that game uh multiplayer and uh, i'm not super interested in paying nintendo's uh paywall right now uh which is you know pretty cheap compared to the price of uh psn or, uh, you know, Xbox uh, Live. So uh, I think Mario Tennis Aces, I've heard people, some people describe it as this year's arms, which is to basically the shortcut way of saying, like, it was kind of a cool concept, but the multiplayer community has kind of fizzled out around that game shortly after its release. Uh, I can't really corroborate that, but I will say that my, kind of, my interest kind of dropped off of that game. Uh, I have yet to uh, fully complete the single-player adventure, but what I've played of it, I've, I've really enjoyed the, some of the tennis action in that game. Well, speaking of games on the Switch, a game I would really recommend checking out is Octopath Traveler. This is uh, a game made by Square Enix in their forever quest to build the next Chrono Trigger style game, their next great RPG. I know, right? <laughs> I actually think Octopath Traveler has some great elements. Uh, the music is very, very good. It's definitely going to be in the conversation as uh, one of the best soundtracks of the year. Uh, it has a really great combat system. Uh, there are eight main characters in the game. You you choose kind of a primary character who you kind of run around in and who's your avatar. And the rest you kind of um, meet together in the story. The way they come together in the story doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. These are, It just seems like it's kind of like... It's because it's a video game and they have, there has to be air characters that they all kind of come together. Uh, it's supposed to make more sense as you go on in the game. But uh, so far, the thing that I keep coming back to is the really great combat. Uh, there are some really great boss mechanics that really challenge your understanding of those systems that builds on kind of the bravely default uh, taking multiple turns in a single turn style of uh, the way things work. Really great abilities. Uh, yeah, I, if you have a Switch, I really highly recommend you check out, checking out Octopath Traveler. It's it's a, probably one of that system's uh, great RPGs. Yeah, just so many games on Switch. Um, Tumble Seed, which was on sale maybe a couple months ago, that is a really, really interesting platforming game. I didn't expect to like it as much as I have so far. It's this roguelike style game, right, where you're doing single runs and trying to get as far as you can. Um, but you're a seed that rolls left and right and you control with your two thumbsticks uh, sort of a level right and uh, you're progressing vertically towards the top of a mountain and as you're moving your ramp let's call it a ramp right you know left side will lean the left angle right side will will lean the right angle and you're maneuvering and avoiding holes and enemies on the course um, collecting new abilities uh, to help you progress very, very interesting. Never played something like this before, but I'm really, really liking it so far. And it's quite difficult. Um, so check that out on the eShop if you're interested. Well, speaking of uh, uh, difficult games on the Switch that are also platformers and slightly roguelike, uh, may I re recommend Celeste? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, play I played this game on the PC. Uh, it came out earlier this year. Fantastic, fantastic video game. If you really enjoyed uh, games like uh, Super Meat Boy, this is a, a, a game for you. I completed it in about six hours. I'm not trying to brag there. I died a <laughs> lot. Uh, cli climbing the mountain in Celeste. I think that game has really uh, heartwarming and great writing, a really great story in there, uh, You know, a really great art style too, great music. Uh, just really, really well done. It, it will probably take most players about uh, eight to ten hours to to complete the game. Uh, if you get there, it is it is brutal, brutally difficult in the last few levels, but uh, so worth it. Uh, you're gonna want to try to collect as many strawberries as you can, which is uh, kind of a meaningless collectible. But uh, I don't know. The game does a really good job of encouraging you without like kind of pushing you over the line. Uh, it's it's like one of those like uh, anger inducing like controller thrower at the t at the tv kind of games but it's it's not actually like the way it's written and the way it's done is so like it's so nice it's, it's like a pleasant video game uh it's it's, it's like the nicest compliment i can pay it it's definitely going to be one of the tops of the year for sure 
for me, one of the top games of the year. It's definitely going to be on my top 10. Yoku's Island Express. This game on Switch is phenomenal. It's a it, it takes place. You play this bug that is maneuvering this pinball around a lush tropical uh, environment, and it's it's a pinball platformer and and kind of like a Metroidvania game in a way. There's a lot of backtracking and exploring new areas and filling out a map, um, but in self-contained little pinball tables and and. And I, I think there's a lot of skill involved in, you know, how you're placing your shots and attacking enemies and getting around the, the, the environment that way, too. It's just so pleasant and unique. It's It has a really cheerful soundtrack. I think it's so innovative in the way that you are getting around the environment, right? You're, you're pinballing around. It's not one table and you're just like setting up a high score. You are exploring this. You're taking on quests. You're returning to other areas. Uh, you're, you're getting to unexplored parts of the map that you never thought you could, you could reach through new abilities and items. I highly recommend you check this game out. I, I saw this game and everyone was thinking, what, what is this branding? What? And, and it seemed like kind of confusing people thinking it was some sort of like tropical Yoshi game. It's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. Yoku's Island Express. You have to check this game out. It's by Team 17, right? They're the developers of uh, Ukulele. So uh, definitely an adorable game. I think it's also out on PC, PS4, and Xbox. So pretty much uh, everything you might want to play it on. Uh, sounds really, really cool. Not, six, not s- since Sonic Spinball has a pinball uh, pinball platformer had me intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of great pinball games out there. I mean, you could go back even to, to Pokemon Pinball, Pinball on the NES, uh, that built-in Windows game. What is it? Cosmic <laughs> Pinball, right? <laughs> All right, you're didn't kidding. think I'd bring that one up. You're kidding me, but Yoku's Island Express is, is definitely something that I've heard you talk so effusively about that I'm, I'm really interested in checking it out. Um, some games that I'm also excited about before the end of this year haven't been released yet. Oh, excuse me. As of this recording, it has been released. Soul Calibur VI. Very excited to check that out. Um, I I've missed three through five, so I'm excited to hop back into the Soul Calibur franchise. I loved two growing up, but with the new character customizations and, of course, the great cast character in Geralt from the Witcher series, I'm really, really hyped about Soul Calibur. Yeah, it's been getting good reviews. A lot of people have been saying that it's basically doing to the Soul Calibur series what Tekken 7 did to t- the Tekken series, which uh, Tekken 7 was an excellent game. Of course, uh, Bandai Namco made uh, Soul Calibur 6 as well. Uh, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. I did check out uh, the previous... I've checked out every Soul Calibur game. It, the, it, the wheels of the franchise kind of came off in 5. Uh, the story wasn't that interesting. They uh, the, Some of the character creator stuff, while pretty detailed not as great as it was in soul Calibur four uh so i i'm super interested in, in checking out soul Calibur six it, it looks really fun and uh yeah it i can't i love fighting games when i can get really into them and soul Calibur is is a series that's probably more accessible than most as far as button mashing and uh you know there's still a lot of depth uh, they've added like a reverse edge, which is kind of uh, like a counter system that kind of works a little bit like a rock, paper, scissors game uh, that will really make it uh, more friendly to newcomers. Yeah. And I also think between Tekken and Soul Calibur, they're knocking off Street Fighter as one of the premier fighting game franchises as of late because Street Fighter V has been, <laughs> let's call it a big disappointment. OK. Um, and and yeah, I, I can't speak to Soul Calibur Six without playing it yet. But from what I've heard, very, very, very good things. For me, also, another game that, that's on my short list to play, Tetris Effect, which should be out, I believe, uh, in November. This is this is a really visually interesting uh, take on, on Tetris, and it's also supported in PSVR, right? Yeah, from all the previews, Tetris Effect sounds like it's going to be one of the essentials for PSVR. Uh, a lot of uh, hype and speculation uh, saying that... It, Visually, it's a lot like going to be a lot like Res, and it's probably going to be one of the next new Tetris games that people are going to be talking about for a long, long time. I'm super excited to check it out. I finally have a PSVR, and I've been super waiting for something to really check out on it, and uh, I'm very excited for the Tetris Effect too. Uh, 
I, I, I love Tetris so much. And uh, did you check out the Tetris World Championships? That was that was really something. They, they were playing uh, NES Tetris. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Uh, it's on Twitch. Uh, really exciting final match. Um, but I can't, I, I love Tetris. It's, it was one of my first video games. Uh, I can't wait for it to come back in style. Yeah, absolutely. I've been a huge Tetris fan. I even played in the early online days on the DS, believe it or not. So that um, was, that was a great Tetris game. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently, there've been some, some great Tetris games, even on 3DS continuing on as well. Um, excited to try that one as well. Yeah, just very excited to get back to video games um, now that uh, we've wrapped up a lot of things in our personal lives. Uh, let's let's wrap this episode up, though. If you liked our show, please subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. We greatly appreciate those reviews. They're a huge help for our show. You can also listen to our show on Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, your favorite podcast app, or wherever else fine podcasts aren't sold. For more video game news, reviews, history, culture, and music... That we're coming back to eventually, we promise. Check out our website, 1PVS2P.com. We have a review up now of Marvel Spider-Man. And uh, we promise that we're going to be doing more video content and more reviews and more blogging uh, in the near-term future. Like us on Facebook. Make sure to find us on Twitch and follow us on Twitter at 1PVS2P. As always, we want to thank Phonetic Hero for the use of his songs for our show. Coffee Stomp, and Super Manly Brothers X. Both songs are part of the compilation project. Chip Tunes equals win. Thanks for listening, everybody. Video games, they never left us. <laughs>